Well, next, we get, to, uh, we get to hear a testimony. Do you like testimonies like I like testimonies? We love testimonies. And uh, so next up will be Bonnie Barnett. She's originally from Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Bonnie's been married to her pastor and husband, John, for 35 years. They have eight grown children and one-year-old grandson. John and Bonnie serve at the Calvary Bible Church in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Bonnie serves in many capacities, but says her favorite part of ministry is evangelism. Here to share her testimony, testimony with us, please make welcome Bonnie Barnett. Thank you. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I grew up in a wonderful home in upstate New York and we were a typical American family. We loved each other, we worked hard and we went to church every Sunday. But something was missing, the word of God. Every Sunday I walked through those doors, sat next to my dad and listened to a sermon and walked out through those same doors unchanged. What was, the, what was missing? It was the word of God. The Bible was never presented and the gospel was never proclaimed. Before I was even a teenager, I began to go astray. Isaiah 53, 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Ironically, it was when I became heavily involved in the occult that I began to realize the powers of darkness were real. Tarot cards, seances, trying to communicate with the dead, all drove me desperately to want God's protection. I just didn't know how to get to God. But God, our great God, heard the silent cry of my heart. You see, all of the stubbornness, fear, and pride were hidden in my heart. On the outside, externally, I was a star student, an athlete, a leader, and at 16, I was awarded a scholarship to travel and live in Denmark for one year to represent our country. So in June of 1973, I boarded a plane in New York City for Denmark for a year. And at the same time, a teenage girl from Delaware boarded a plane for Denmark for a year. And God in his great mercy and love placed us together as roommates for three weeks. The first day I met Linda, she said, you must be born again. I watched Linda read her Bible daily. I watched her pray, and I listened to her lift her voice in songs of praise to her Savior. Linda radiated peace and joy, something I didn't have. But my stubborn heart continued to search. But the seed of the Word of God had been planted in my heart. For another five years, I struggled with the true meaning of life. I sought peace and happiness through relationships, through substances, only to end up broken and empty again and again. I attended mass, Jewish Bible studies, listened to the Jehovah's Witnesses, studied the roots of Mormonism and researched the Moonies and even Har Krishna. But all the while, I remembered Linda's words that Jesus is the Son of God and her cry, you must be born again. Disillusioned at 21, I quit college and I moved home. And one night, I arrogantly argued with my father. And though he was a good father, he, in his anger at that moment and frustration, literally picked me up and tried to throw me through our living room window. I moved out the next day. 
I drove off in my 1969 Dodge Dart with all of my earthly belongings in the trunk of my car. I lived in my car until I could find a job and a room to rent. I was homeless and hopeless at 21. And as life became more and more meaningless, working three jobs and living in a lonely rented room, I began drinking heavily. But God, he had not forgotten me. I had made a mess of my life. But God continued to send his messengers. One by one into my life, they gently watered the seed of the word of God. It was a cold January blizzard night in 1978 when I hit bottom and finally looked up for help. My life was ravaged like the photos we've been seeing this morning utterly rejected and deserted by everyone I ever loved, I felt I had no reason to go on living. I had tried everything life offered and was hopelessly unsatisfied, lost, and burdened by my own sin. And that night I begged God to show me the truth if there was really only one way to God through Jesus Christ. And when I moved out of my home in the trunk of my Dodge Dart, I had packed a green testament from the Gideons. You see, six years earlier, a faithful Gideon had stood on the campus of Binghamton, SUNY New York, and placed the New Testament in the hands of my big brother. And that New Testament had found its way into our home and into my hands, and soon into my heart. Alone in that blizzard, I opened the New Testament to Matthew, and for the first time in my life, understood what I was reading. I finished Matthew and voraciously continued reading all night without stopping through Mark, Luke, and John. All night long, the blizzard of a storm raged outside my window, but inside, Peace was soon to come. As I read, tears streamed down my face when I learned that God had loved me all along while I was a sinner. Jesus had paid for all my sin and offered me forgiveness and eternal life in him. I fell to my knees that night alone, and Jesus marvelously saved me that night. My chains fell off, and I was set free from the power of darkness. The burden of my sin I'd carried for years was gone. Jesus opened my eyes and turned me from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. In that moment, God gave me new life and new hope in him. God's amazing grace is greater than all my sin. Five years later, after finishing Bible college, I met and married my husband, John, and God has blessed us with eight wonderful children. As a pastor's wife for over 34 years, and now as a full-time missionary with a mission called Discover the Book Ministries, I delight to share with women and young people around the world that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. There is salvation and no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. And I want to thank all of you for faithfully making his name known among the nations and on every college campus in the United States. I am a life that was transformed and I thank you for giving to the Lord. Never stop holding forth the word of life. Thank you. There I am. Oh, thank you, Bonnie, so much for sharing your testimony with us. And in behalf of the Gideons International, we would like to provide you with a 
New Testament and Psalms with your name. We'd also like to provide you with a card stating that we are placing Bibles somewhere around the world on behalf and honor of you sharing your testimony today. God bless you so, so very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.